The Princess and the Pea. Hello, fourth grade, Mrs. Hales here with your next art lesson. I'm really excited today because I've always wanted to do this lesson and I've just never had time to fit it in. So this year I decided to prioritize it. So here we go. Hans Christian Andersen retold or wrote down this folktale in the 1800s, but it had been around for a long time before that and in lots of different countries, in lots of different cultures. Remember, a folktale is a story that's probably not true, but possibly, but it's been told orally or verbally um, passed around from person to person through story. So Hans Christian Andersen wrote this story down in the 1800s, and it's been even retold since then. Um, you might be familiar with the, with the original version that he wrote down, but I, I love this newer version. It's kind of a modern twist on it. Let's see what you think. The Princess and the Pea is an interesting story. The overly picky prince determined to find a true princess, and the pea in the bed... Uh... Never mind. Anyway, odd tale indeed. Let's look at how this story should have ended, shall we? Oh, mother, I fear I shall never find a true princess that is truly true. And now it is beginning to rain. Woe is me. Don't despair, my darling dear. You deserve a princess. As true as can be. And while the picky prince was at his whiniest, and the storm had reached its stormiest, there came a knock at the castle's front door. The prince opened the door to find the soggiest, muddiest, least princessiest looking young woman he had ever seen. Hello. Yes? I got separated from my traveling companions during this terrible storm. May I please come in out of the rain? I'm sorry, but we're only allowing entrance to true princesses. Good day. But the woman at the door would not give up. She knocked even louder this time. Yes? I am a true princess. Please, let me come in out of the rain. The prince was confused. Could this soggy, muddy, now grumpy young woman truly be a true princess? Of course you can come in, muddy. I mean, my dear. Oh, thank you. I'm so tired, drenched, and hungry. I've barely slept at all on this trip. What I really need is shelter for the night. But, mother, she's... Of course, of course. Of course. Why don't you get something to eat and warm up by the fire as we prepare a nice room? For you to sleep in tonight. Thank you so much. But, Mother, why would you... Don't worry, darling. I have the perfect way to test if she's a true princess or not. So while the soggy princess dried out, the queen directed her servants to prepare a bed with 20 mattresses. More? More! Then she added 20 soft down comforters. More? More! Then the queen took a single tiny green pea and placed it under the massive pile of comforters and mattresses. More? No. A true princess is sensitive, so if she feels that tiny pea under all of that, then we will know she is a true princess. Why don't we just call the kingdom she says she's from and ask them if she's a princess? This is the only way! The next morning at breakfast, the prince and the queen anxiously awaited the arrival of the princess. Finally, she dragged herself down the stairs with what the prince thought were very promising bags under her red swollen eyes. Good morning, my dear. How did you sleep last night? <sighs> Sadly, I didn't sleep well at all. Thank you for the room, but there was some sort of rock or lump in those mattresses. No matter how I tossed or turned, I couldn't get comfortable. I never actually fell asleep. Hooray! Oh you passed the test! What? That was all a test! Only a true princess would be sensitive enough to know the pee was there. You passed! And now we know you are a true whoa, princess. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I showed up on your doorstep drenched, filthy, and exhausted. And you decided to test me? Um, yes, it was all a test. But you passed, so hooray! And now you two can get married! Yes! Hooray! Married! Ha -ha! <laughs> no! We're not getting married! What is wrong with you people? That's the meanest thing anyone has ever done to me! Why would I want to marry someone who treats women that way? Um, because I'm a prince. What was it you said to me last night? Oh, right, I remember. Good day! <gasps> but wait! You're the only true princess in the land! Yeah, but you're not the only prince! I'm off to find someone nicer! And she did find someone nicer. A kind prince who respected her and didn't try to put her through silly, stupid tests. They lived happily ever after and never ate peas. So, the moral of the story? 
Always be nice to people. And don't hide your vegetables under the bed. The end. So what did you guys think? How was that story different from the original telling of the princess and the pea? Right, the ending was different. The whole beginning and middle part of the story is the same, but it's not till you get to the end that the princess stands up for herself and says, you people, I don't wanna test into this family. Who, what kind of people make me, would make me take a test? Why can't you just appreciate me or love me for who I am? So she decides she's out of there. I like a strong princess. All right, boys and girls, so our artwork today is gonna to be inspired by the story, The Princess and the Pea, either version, or if you wanna switch it around and make it a Prince and the Pea story, you're welcome to do that too. In the story, there are over 20 feather beds or mattresses. We don't need that many. Let's say six to eight different feather beds or mattresses. Each mattress is gonna have a different pattern on it and be a different color. You're going to need a bed and you're going to need a prince or a princess at the top. Supplies you need today are a 12 by 18 inch piece of white drawing paper, a pencil, and an eraser. For this drawing, because everything is resting on the bed, I'm gonna draw the bed first. I wanted to draw a little bit of a fancier bed, so I drew a sleigh bed with a headboard and a footboard that curved out. And then I'm gonna draw my mattresses or my feather beds, as they used to be called. They're not all gonna be the same size or shape. I'm gonna draw them a little bit differently so they all look different. I'm gonna draw my girl laying on her side. I have some pictures of people laying on their side. I'm gonna post for you to draw from. And with her eyes closed and she's got a kind of a happy grin on her face and her hand is resting on the pillow. So you don't even have to draw the whole hand. Now I'm gonna put patterns in each one of my mattresses and I'm gonna put a different pattern on each mattress. I think I counted that I have 11 different mattresses or feather beds, so I'm gonna need 11 different patterns. Some things that you can, um, patterns that you can make are polka dots, stripes, plaids, wavy lines or zigzags. You could make some fruit like strawberries or cherries or bananas or apples. You could draw things from nature on your mattresses like leaves or trees or plants or flowers. You could draw anything that you would see on a little kid's blanket like a sailboat or a teddy bear or moons and stars, uh, clouds, hearts, all kinds of um, ideas of things that you could put on there. We are not gonna outline our pencil lines or go over our pencil lines with Sharpie for this project because we're going to use watercolor and crayon and we're gonna use the wax in the crayon as a resist. So be thinking about which areas you wanna paint and which areas you wanna color for next week. So your goal for today is to have a completed drawing of a prince or a princess resting or sleeping on six to eight to ten feather beds or mattresses and on a bed. Let's talk about um, space. So the positive space in your picture is the things that you're drawing. That's what your drawing is. That's the positive space in this picture. And the negative space is going to be the space behind your picture. You want your negative space and your positive space to be fairly balanced. So you want to have a large drawing in the middle of your picture that takes up the majority of the space and a little bit of negative space in the background that doesn't have anything in it or doesn't doesn't have anything major in it. If you wanna put a few stars or a few designs back there, you can, but they shouldn't detract from the princess in the bed or the prince in the bed. Um, we're also gonna be using repetition and pattern. Those are principles of design. Now the art elements that we've talked about before that we're gonna be using are line, shape, space, and texture. All right, boys and girls, work hard on your prince or princess in the pea drawings. Work large, fill your compositions so you'll have more space to put um, cool patterns in there. Be inventive. Think of really fun, unusual, creative patterns for your feather beds or your mattresses. By the way, 
Do you know why they were called feather beds a long time ago? Because they were stuffed with feathers. Um, I'm going to leave you with this picture of a person lying on their side for you to draw from. See you next time.